Now for this last part of the question, we're told that when B has moved a distance of one meter up the plane, the string breaks. And given that in the subsequent motion B does not reach P, we've got to find the time that elapses between the instance when the string breaks and when B comes to instantaneous rest. So what I want to do is just add to this diagram. We found out in the previous part that after one meter, B is traveling at 2.8 meters per second. And now the string snaps and the particle then is just going to travel a little bit further up the plane without the string being attached. And when it gets to say this point here, it's moving with no speed at all. Just for an instant it stops before returning back down the plane. So what we've got to do in order to find this time, we're going to head towards a SUVAT uh, based equation. But what we don't have is acceleration. So what we've got to do is consider when the particle is in say a general position. Let's just say somewhere in between here. And we'll need to know that it's de-accelerating through here. We'll just mark on an acceleration arrow over this stage, something like this. Now, this acceleration is going to be different to the acceleration we found on this stretch. Let's just call it A again, okay? We need to mark on the forces acting on the particle. There's going to be the weight acting downwards. It was mass 3 kilograms, so that's going to be 3g newtons. There's going to be the contact force, the normal contact force coming off the plane. Okay, we'll call that R Newtons. And we've got the frictional force acting down the plane, opposing motion. So we'll have that going downwards like so. And that we know is going to be mu R. We know that mu is two thirds, so we've got two thirds R Newtons. All right? We found out in the earlier part though that the normal contact force R was 36 thirteenths G. Okay, that was done in the last part, 13, 36 thirteenths G Newtons. So if I mark in a dotted line down here, this angle theta appears here. And now what we can do is we can resolve up the plane in the direction of motion. And this will allow us to find out what acceleration is by applying Newton's law of motion, F equals ma. So when we resolve up the plane, we've got minus two thirds r acting down the plane. So that would be minus two thirds r, but we know that r is 36 thirteenths G. So I'm going to pop that in there as 36 thirteenths G. We also have the component of the 3G Newtons, the weight, acting down the plane. Remember it can be split into two components, one into the plane and one down the plane. The one into the plane is perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving in, so we're only interested in the one down the plane. And because that doesn't contain the angle theta, it's going to be 3g sine theta. But it's going to act in the opposite sense to what we're, we've got here. So that's going to be minus 3g sine theta. So that's the force. Now we've got that this equals the mass times the acceleration. The mass is 3 and the acceleration A is what we're trying to find. So if we clean this up, we could divide the 3 into the 36. That goes uh, 12 times, so we've got that. And we've got minus 2 times 12, so it's minus 24 g over 13. And when it comes to this term here, minus 3g times sine theta, sine theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which is 5 thirteenths. So when you do 3g times 5 thirteenths, you're going to end up with minus 15g over 13. And that equals 3a. 
And what you could do is now divide through by 3. You've got 3 goes into both the 15 and the 24. 3 into 3 is 1. 3 into 15 is 5. 3 into the 24 is 8. So you can see that now we've got minus 8 thirteenths g minus another 5 thirteenths g, which is minus 13 thirteenths g. In other words, minus 1g, minus g. So therefore, the acceleration is minus g meters per second per second. A negative number because we would expect that it's decelerating, okay, slowing down. Now that we've got that, all we need to do is now consider a SUVAT-based equation, SUVAT. So if we take up the plane as being positive, then S the displacement, well, we don't know what it is, so we're not worried about that one. U, well, it's started off at 2.8 meters per second, so that's 2.8 meters per second. V, the final velocity, well it came to instantaneous rest, so that's zero. The acceleration we've just found out was minus g. And T is what we're trying to find. So what can we use then to work this out? Well we've obviously got to use V equals u plus at. So we know V, V is zero, U is 2.8, the acceleration is minus G, so we end up with minus G times T. So GT will equal 2.8, and so if we now divide through by 9.8, T equals 2.8 over 9.8, and that works out exactly at two sevenths, two sevenths of a second then before it comes to instantaneous rest. Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea then how to do that particular part of the question.